Hey, it's Mazzy, and, and man, do these jellyfish vinyl issues sting. What the fuck uh, was Capital and Universal thinking uh, the way they did these? All the, all the signposts, the perfect hype stickers are here to make these potentially great records. We get the hype sticker, Jellyfish, Spilt Milk, uh, that is their second album, actually. So I'm working my way backwards right here. The 30th anniversary, and the key word here is listener's edition. Listener's edition. I'm a listener. You're a listener. Cut from original analog master tapes pressed on 180 gram vinyl. That's always the things that a lot of us vinyl people want to hear. Now, I'm not an absolute of all analog uh, records and releases, and um, but cut from the original analog tapes by who? Who? Kevin Gray, Bernie Grunman, Ryan K. Smith. I mean, there are other people too besides you know, Chris Bellman. There are other people that can do great work, right? But um, the hype sticker, these should be amazing. Calm down, Maslov. Uh, this isn't a rant video. Now, uh, the other one, their, their debut belly button, listener edition. And again, it says uh, the same thing. The vinyl is almost as out of focus as this hype sticker. <laughs> now, okay, is that hype, hyperbole, uh, my initial comments on these reissues? I want to talk about them because I obviously listened to them. I got them in uh, yesterday morning. And I listened to the vinyl uh, edition of each one straight through. Not an AB. I just wanted to hear it. Enjoy it. There was something wrong. Now, my pressings were flat, fairly quiet, a little noise, but nothing major. Nothing that I, it's passable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I listened to them. And then last night, in the peace of the evening in here in Seattle, I listened to my original CDs. And I thought, what the fuck? went wrong with these records. Now, if you just listen to them, I mean, as I just listened to them uh, in the afternoon, not comparing, haven't heard the CDs in a few years, haven't listened to the CDs in a few years, I thought they actually sounded pretty good. They were sound okay, but they didn't like bowl me over. Now, if you don't know Jellyfish, let me do a little background here. San Francisco band initially, the origin is from San Francisco. And I never saw Jellyfish. Uh, the albums came out in 1990 and 1993. But I did see the group before that uh, called Beatnik Beach. They used to play around a lot. I think I saw them twice. And they were a fun act and everything. But let's talk about Jellyfish. They morphed, morphed into Jellyfish. These records came out on Charisma Records initially. I never heard the original vinyls. All, you know, 1990, 1993 was in the CD era. Uh, I think about 10 years ago or so, Omnivore put a, uh, a vinyl edition out. I haven't heard those. I suspect those are digital. Never heard them. So essentially, well, basically, literally, these are the first two uh, versions I've heard on vinyl. And these records soared. Now, Jellyfish came out at a time, in a way, their music didn't fit in with what was happening in 1990, 93, with the whole indie scene and hard rock scene, other things going on. But just the influence is right up my alley. They're like a power pop, just, they're, they're, they're amazing. They're, they're sonic wonders in their recordings. They're just really beautiful. Obviously, you would compare them to Queen. 10cc, I see that more, but sometimes in the Queen camp, sometimes in the 10cc camp. Uh, they would be like the Raspberries, the Beach Boys, Wings with Paul McCartney. They had that power pop, multi-harmonies, uh, great oral sound things happening in stereo. Uh, th there was, sh I mean, they're thick records, but there's a lot going on. And you sh should hear all the atmospheric things in those records. But they're, they're soaring harmonies uh, by Andy Sturmer, who was drums and vocalist, and Roger Manning, who was a keyboard and vocalist are really amazing. It's just, it's beautiful music. I say today, the band that comes closest to all these bands too that are doing it in a very independent way and I think should have 
uh, a, a, a spotlight shined on them more are the Lemon Twigs, the two brothers from uh, Long Island, I believe. But that's another story for another day, Lemon Twigs. Check that out. But I love these records. Again, they didn't really do much. They didn't catch on for what was happening at the time. But something went wrong here. Uh, I finally, after that, last night and earlier this morning, I started a being tracks, going through each album, going back and forth from the CD uh, to the vinyl. Now, the vinyl's nice. You have to turn the vinyl up louder on your, compared to the compact. It's compared to a lot of other records. Now, sometimes that's not a bad thing. Theoretically, that shows more dynamics, and uh, it's not a bad thing, but you really need to crank these for them to sound uh, good. And I think it's only good they sound. So if you don't have the CDs and you don't know this music, uh, these are probably sufficient. They're fine, but they shouldn't be fine in 2023. These records are, these are two vinyl copies of 90s bands that people have lusted for since the vinyl resurgence. And people have been wanting these and they're, they're almost hard to get already. They've, they've been selling out and I don't even think a lot of the people in Europe have access to them, but Universal put these out, Capital put these out, and I don't know the entire pedigree. All I do know is that new digital masters were made apparently by a, a mastering engineer called, by the name of Justin Peters. And apparently, according to him, he did amazing remasters for digital streaming. And apparently they sound great. I have not heard it, I'm not a streamer, but I've heard from people who have heard those uh, and, and say they sound amazing. And apparently, uh, he created some files, and what happened is Universal went to GZ, and you wanted to do an all analog. We love when we hear that, all analog. But it sounds like GZ did their sort of uh, mastering. I don't know. I would like someone to tell me who actually cut these to vinyl, who cut the lacquers to these. It wasn't one of those mastering engineers that we know of. Again, it doesn't have to be one of those, but it seems like corners were cut, and they went for the analog hype sticker just for the sake of the analog hype sticker. I'm one that doesn't have to be all analog. And it seems to me they could have done a really great uh, digital cut like MoFi, MoFi. You know, as much as people like to dump on MoFi, some people, when they do it, um, their inter, uh, intermediate step to digital, they do it really well. Then they go back back to analog and they cut it, uh, the lacquers to vinyl. And so uh, for the most, I'd say eight out of 10 times, Bofi gets it right and they sound great even with that uh, DSD uh, uh, digital step. It sounds like they cheaped out here. And I, I, for the life of me, I don't know what happens. Um, these records are anemic. When you compare them to the the, the bass, the mid range, just the, the sonic wonder of these compact discs are beautiful, beautifully recorded, beautifully produced. Uh, now I have an Oppo 205. I have a pretty good uh, CD Blu-ray player. And um, I go through coaxial cables into my uh, system, my Hegel H390, my BMW 702-302 speakers. I have a Riga uh, uh, RP8 with an MC ML Hannah Cart, just to give you a sense. And the vinyl sounds anemic compared to these. These open up, there's richness in the acoustic guitars. The piano is beautiful, the bass comes in, the harmonies, there's sibil sibilance, and I can't say that lately, you know, sibilance, sibilance. Uh, the S's, the S's uh, pop, you know, you hear this on these vinyl tracks. And my cart is set up correctly, it's aligned correctly, in case you're asking. Now, you might not hear that uh, depending on your system. I'm sure it's system dependent. That's always the case. And if you like these and you don't have the CDs, that's all that matters. If it sounds good to you with your ears, but these could have sound so much better, so much richer. The, the bass is dull. Um, everything is squashed here, it seems like. I'm, you know, considering they're analog, I almost can't believe it. Now, apparently they are, and I trust Universal and Capitol Records for saying that, but who, who mastered these? Who did the cutting? Who cut these lacquers to vinyl? I, I want to know, but let's just go through this little, just to show you a little bit. Uh, this is their debut album. 
This is a gorgeous album. It's called Belly Button. It's, I mean, this is very psychedelic pop, Willy Wonka-like cover artwork. Maybe it didn't fit in in the 19, um, uh, 1990. You know, it's funny. Years ago, I heard, uh, I don't know if it was a podcast or I read something, uh, with Kiefer Sutherland was driving. Um, I don't know if he's driving up the coast in California or a, a rural area, and he pulled into this gas station or uh, to fill up gas where you can buy cheap-ass uh, CDs or cassettes. Might have been a cassette, I think, at that time. And he, I think he got this record on cassette. By then, you know, the records had, you know, they, they did their course. They did okay. They didn't do great. He buys this, and he fell in love with Jellyfish. Kiefer Sutherland hadn't heard Jellyfish, bought it on a whim because of the cover, and played it, and he fell in love with Jellyfish. And that's what this band is like. It's like power pop. All the, all the uh, comparisons I said. But... You know, there's that McCartney kind of old timey thing. There's orchestration, there's power ballads, beautiful sonic uh, power, uh, you know, ditties as well. Like, uh, you know, woke up, get out of bed, that part of uh, McCartney's side of things that's on uh, some of these records. And it just, after hearing the CDs, this loses something. It's, it's, it, it saddens me. I, what did you do? Universal, what did you do to fuck these up? I hate to rant because, you know, the whole vinyl thing is, you know, there's people that say, oh, you, sh you know, why just get the CD? If it's, if it's you know, it, you're, when you're cutting a CD, you're doing a digital thing on vinyl, that's all it is. No, it's not that. There's a lot more to it. And some digital recordings and uh, digital transfers can sound very good on vinyl if it's mastered. It comes down to the mastering. I would even forgive the pressings, which are good, not great, but they're fine. Mine are flat. I don't have major issues with the pressing. But the sound on these, there's no soul. And these are pop records. So to say there's no soul on a pop record is obvious, obvious uh, thing. But there's there's something wrong. There's, it's so, so disappointing. Now, again, um, I, I don't think I have to say any more. I think I've said it all. Um, what did you do? The hype sticker says analog. It'll get people to buy it because it says all analog, but you failed. These are failures. Uh, you might like them, and like, as I said, enjoy them, but ultimately, these two albums on vinyl by this great band, Jellyfish, who people have been waiting for these for years, literally, since the omnivore things came and went so quickly. Th these are failures in relation to the original compact discs. So I'd like to know, you know, if somebody from uh, Universal or from Capital wants to reach out to me and tell me what the fuck actually happened, you know, I'd like to know. Um, if you have these CDs, you don't need a vinyl, except for the artwork. Mazzy loves you. See you next time. God, that's a stinger.